Hello everybody, Dick Coughlin here. I'll be honest, I'm feeling like utter shit today, but needs must as the devil drives, and I've got to get this video out. And uh, you know, in this in this day and age, folks, we have to be honest. Let's be honest. It, you know, it, it's it's hard to find a place if you follow politics and the news. It's hard to find a place um, where you can you can feel comfortable, you can feel you can relax. But as we all know, some there's one bastion of reason and common sense that we can always go to to rely on and that is of course the Daily Mail online so I'm gonna go through and do some good old-fashioned Daily Mail comment sections for you just like we use just like we just like we always do you know so I hope you enjoy that um, let's start off with a very simple one here fears rise world's most dangerous glacier I didn't even know there was such a thing I didn't know we ranked glaciers in terms of most danger, the world's most dangerous glacier could soon collapse as NASA study reveals gigantic cavity two thirds the area of Manhattan and almost a thousand feet tall at base of Thwaites Glacier in Antarctica. <clears throat> I'm sure you can imagine this is something that really concerns the uh, Daily the Daily Mail. Um, Okay, so Susie from Surrey says same stories I had taught to me in the early 90s by my geography teacher okay why is your geography teacher teaching you about global warming I mean am I missing something there why is your geography teacher my geography teacher, who was obviously the most informed person on planet Earth on this issue, who insisted that by 2015, southern England would have the same climate level, same climate as Spain, <coughs> and sea levels would have risen so much, some lower-lying areas of London would be underwater. You do realise, though, that when he said the same climate as Spain, that he meant Spain at that time. Spain's climate will go up too. You know, it's all BS. This planet heats and cools and has done for millions of years, even before the lefties hijacked it. <coughs> to what we hijacked the planet, yeah. Quick, everyone, to your wallets. Paying more green taxes is the only way, is the only thing that can save us now just in time to secure the next year's funding for more research. Fear-mongering, I would say. That's from Pato in Ottawa, Canada. Actually, the top one's from Canada as well. What the fuck are Canadians sat there thinking? Okay, what can be done to stop or slow this process? Not a damn thing. This has been happening in cycles for millions of years. You notice, right, these are the same people, right, who who vote for Brexit. And when you bring up stuff that like, could go wrong or bad things that happen as a consequence of Brexit, they always say, oh, you know, oh, no one knows. No one really knows, do they? No one really knows. Yeah. Whenever you get them, whenever you get these bastards to a point where they don't know what's going on, it's no one really knows, do they? Hey, do they? No, no one really fucking knows and so but they're confident to say this has been happening for millions of years that they know what's been happening <coughs> for millions of years now but they can't fucking tell you the earth's climate has been in a constant flux from the very beginning long before human beings showed up <coughs> <coughs> see what I mean Fake hysteria goes well with fake global warming. The media can't help themselves. In decades, most of us reading this will be dead. Can't say I care. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that is, do you know what? Fair play to the faceless man from Bravos. Because he's actually summed up a very difficult, a very, he's made a very interesting point here regarding global warming. In the 
the problem with a lot of people is it's hard to convince them to give a shit about something that doesn't affect them and is actually going to be a consequence for like in de most of us. Re I love that. Fuck planet Earth. Oh, when I'm dead, why do I care what happens to my children or my children's children? Who gives a smeg? <laughs> Okay, let's... I think there's enough of that. Okay, hold on. Um, move, next bit. Oh, okay. Um, okay, now this is an interesting one. Um, let's just... Okay, so... This is, a, this is an article about trying to get Australian doctors to come over to the UK. Come to the land of Harry Potter. NHS chiefs hope attractions of the boy wizard, Shakespeare and Manchester United will tempt Australian GPs to plug English family get doctor gap. And you give it the popular English exports are being used in a new campaign across Facebook and Instagram to lure more family doctors to the British Overseas Territory. Now, so let's have a look, see what the Daily Mail think of this one. Why would you want to leave Australia for this dump? <laughs> I love this country. I'm sick of foreigners denigrating this country. I'm sick of people like Remainers and EU running this country down. This is the best country in the world. Why would you want to leave Australia for this shithole? Rain, overcrowding, and poor pay. I can't see any attraction other than a desire to see exotic chronic diseases brought by the millions of unskilled immigrants <coughs> from every corner of the globe, not crowding every GP office. Exotic, exotic chronic diseases, as we know, in... London, particularly in Stratford, there's been an outbreak of green parrot disease. I have a simpler idea without lying. Just stop the 300,000 non-EU people coming unless they are doctors. Start sending people back to lighten the burden. Yeah, literally lighten the burden. Lighten the fucking skin. The UK has two hospital beds per 1,000 people. Germany has eight per 1,000 people. It's a, it, the solution's always the same, isn't it? Get rid of fucking... This is a great one. We don't need more GPs. We need fewer patients. <laughs> what's, the, what's your solution? What is your solution, Darren from Londonderry? What, kill people? We need fewer patients. How about reducing the need for more doctors by simply sending back the hundreds of thousands who come here? And they're not all sick, you know. Dorset maids from Broadchurch. Unlimited immigration is the main problem. But if we have have to get doctors from abroad, get ones that speak English. So he's actually Terry's on board with this idea to his credit. He's not he's not being he's not actually uh, running away from it. Okay. So let's have a look at the next one. Uh hold on. Let's have a look at this one. <laughs> Winston Churchill, we shall defend our island whatever may, ever the cost may be. We shall fight on the beaches, we shall fight on the landing grounds, we shall fight in the fields and in the streets, we shall fight in the hills, we shall never surrender. And then the government since gave it all away, no deal. Of course, this is Winston Churchill, the man who once, who literally once spoke of creating a United States of Europe. But of course, you know that he would. What would he know? What would he know about that? Um, 
What's this one? Okay. Torn to pieces by the by the crocs. Zebra is ripped apart by forty hungry crocodiles. The one of with one of the beasts swallowing a whole leg. This is news. This is news, apparently. The Daily Mail, apparently, crocodiles eat zebras. Predators eat animals. Did you know this? Did you know? Let's look at this bit. Her head appeared above the surface, bereft of its body, but her eyes still seemed frozen in panic. Yeah, that's just generally the last thing. Well, generally the last thing you probably think before you've had your ass eaten by 40 crocodiles is, ooh, and then... Why is that news? This is Meghan Markle stories. Here we are. So this is what Sajid Javid confirms unlimited numbers of EU migrants will still be able to enter the UK for up to three years after Brexit, even if there's no deal. Fantastic news. What did the Daily Mail have to say about that? We need a referendum on immigration. No, we are never having another referendum in this fucking country ever again. I don't care what it is, because we will fuck it up. We fuck it up every time. We should stop giving people who are not qualified to know the real fucking answers to questions that are too complicated the power to make a fucking decision. I know that is by default democracy in a, in a nutshell, but we are never having a... Because if we had a referendum, do you want... A fucking giant red hot poker shoved up your ass at speed, right? We would fuck it. We would fuck it up just because. Well, I'm not having the papers tell me. We need a referendum. I haven't seen a single. I haven't seen a single of the benefits the press lies about. Lie about. Houses are three times as expensive as 20 years ago. Pensions have reduced by two thirds. How is that immigrants' thought? And it's impossible to get a doctor. It's impossible. It's impossible to get a doctor's appointment. It's time to reverse immigration and force them to leave. This is from Alonzo. Kriana in Miami Beach. I've got a funny feeling some of these might be might be bots. <laughs> call call me old fashioned. I read the Daily Mail every day, and I must say, Britain sounds like a hellhole. Violent crime, useless police. This is from a guy who lives in Miami. Transportation chaos every day. Weak. Backstabbing political leaders, overzealous local governments, gone wild with fines and rules and regs, nasty neighbours, a leeching royal family slash ruling class. Why could anyone move there? Yes, thank you, Alonso. Alonso Hiruana from, from Miami Beach. <laughs> Okay, okay, this is, uh, this was news about, um, so Black Panther, Black Panther car celebrate triumphant win with scoring top honour at the SAG Award. I don't know what SAG Awards are, but apparently they did very well. Now, I'm going to give you a few seconds to think of everything. How do you think, looking at this picture, how do you think the Daily Mail processed the information of Black Panther winning awards? PC motivated award, nothing more, nothing less. More PC pandering. There should be an award for political correctness. Then this movie will fit right in. It is an entertaining movie, but winning an award is a bit of a stretch. Way to go, liberals and PC culture, ruining good original content movies. It's a shame how everything is judged based on reparations of colour these days. People are still not free of the mind slavery. Shake my head. 
had a hard time watching it. I thought a guy with a Pepe the Frog fucking thing. I had a hard time watching it. I thought the screen was turned off due to the extreme dark. Oh, <laughs> you're so funny, Jed. How to make an awful mo movie great. Make it about race. Wow, how the bar has been lowered for the purposes of PC. PC nonsense. Two separate words. Sense spelt S-E-N-C-E -E, strikes again. PC, here we go again. It's a fi This was another thing I saw. I kept seeing comments from people saying, oh, it's a fix. Yes, it's an award, Sarah. I like the fact these people all of a sudden have just clocked into the idea. But first of all, yes, in award ceremonies, there are very sort of straight... There are sort of a lot of times when things have won... People have won awards not necessarily based on how good the film was. Right? And also, yes, award ceremonies are fixed. There's a panel who decides who wins, and they win. They don't randomly pick people at fucking... Is it, you don't just pick a random fucking person just to fucking go, oh, there you go. What's this one? Royal biographer claims that down-to-earth Harry becomes high maintenance when he's with Me Megan and says palace staff find him aloof. Oh, what a surprise. A bloke for... A blo when a bloke's around his missus, he all of a sudden fucking becomes high maintenance. God, shocking fuck bugger me. Let's have a look. What <laughs> Dimwit knows he's got a narcissist as a wife and has no idea how to handle her demands. So he takes it out on those whom he previously had relaxed relationship. Simples. You mean they said he was aloof? That doesn't mean he's taking it out on me. He doesn't give a shit. This, the, this, year, this is years of planning by a very dangerous female to divide and separate the two brothers. Have oh my God, what well, imagine being this fucking tragically paranoid? Imagine it. It's all so Kardashian-ish now. Yeah, the royal family only recently became a subject for which people would focus on them for the purposes of fucking salacious drama and gossip. This hasn't been going on for... You. Forget fucking Sarah Ferguson getting her toes sucked in the 90s. <coughs> oh yeah, Princess Diana and Charles. Yeah, they never, never... This is only recently this has fucking happened, isn't it? I'm sure William expressed his concerns to Harry regarding Meghan Markle. Yeah, you're sure of that? I'm sure, I'm sure he must have. You, you know this why? Blue eyes of Austin, London. There were red flags. William saw that Harry chose to ignore. I don't think this is death shall we part. It's death. Death. It's death do it till death do us part, not till death shall we part. That is a tad sinister. He won't be the first male to ruin his life over a woman. Puh, am I right, lad? Am I right? Am I right, lad? Who seemed to like gold and turned out to be dross. Who seemed like gold. Yeah, you're a fucking catch, aren't you? Valkyrie Rides at Dawn, who is apparently literally from Valhalla in the United States. I think not. Well, there's a surprise. Harry has become more difficult since marrying Meghan. Tell us something we don't know. Well, I don't know, actually, because I don't fucking know either of them. Banish the pair of them to the country without engagements and staff. Why? I'm just so, so much Meghan Markle. Just fuck off. Just piss the fuck off. Here's an idea. Take a dis disused oil rig, kit it out as a floating immigration centre, then dump it on France's... No apostrophe. ...side of the channel. Then take any illegals found trying to cross the channel to it and leave the EU to deal with them. That's literally from a person whose name is Humble Pleasant.
Oh, there's even more. There's two stories here about the Black Panther award ceremony. Oh, this is amazing, right? The sad fact is SAG would have had all kinds of horrible accusations thrown at them if they hadn't given the film a couple of awards. I've never even heard of SAG. What the fuck is SAG? And they knew it. It's called Weaponized Et Hnini City, which he's literally put iPhones. It doesn't foster equality. In the end, sadly, it has it has the opposite it has the opposite effect and actually causes division. Sometimes one has to sacrifice to not cause problems. Tired of this racist rhetoric, racist, they've censored the word, <coughs> so if this keeps the peace, so be it. What? You think this is going to keep the peace? I'm not happy about it, but I'm willing to sacrifice a few political correctness gone mad you can be sure Oprah is behind this <laughs> I never read that one Oprah <laughs> making a joke of proper filmmaking they should be embarrassed to win very political film sucks a PC choice, nothing more. When will will there be a White Panther coming soon? No, because no cunt's made of a, a film called White Panther. You have got a million other white superheroes, though. Jesus fucking Christ almighty, let's go... Let's go one more. This Prince William blames the stiff upper lip mentality of his grandmother's war generation for today's mental health problems. Oof. The stiff upper lip mentality was what carried the day for freedom when Britain stood alone against yeah Britain stood alone against the enemy. We won World War Two, no help from no one else. It was what made it possible to keep calm and carry on. It prevented panic when London was blitzed. You don't know that. It permitted to sleep in tube stations, even unpowered tracks without going mad. In short, it was the single most admirable act of the British people. If it had mental health consequences, well, there's a price to be paid for everything. You're not saying he's wrong. He's not saying... He's not saying people don't have to be resilient. He's just saying that when you translate that into every why am I wasting my time stiff upper lip is no bad thing with these these are the people who you've just seen absolutely having a meltdown because Black Panther won a couple of awards at a recent award ceremony that they've never fucking heard of and they're sitting there talking about bombs being dropped they're sitting there talking about what they're talking about surviving through a war and the admirable qualities of surviving through the fucking blitz and keep calm and carry on and oh my god there's a fucking oh my god Meghan Markle and is you know is trying to fucking pussy whip fucking Prince Harry oh my god there's a fucking there's a tra are they British traps I don't want you know, this is what the these people sit here and talk about this. do you know what fuck this I can't handle this anymore Dick Coughlin, where there's no sense, there's no feeling. <laughs>